Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Dominic Berry and Mike Benyon Rowe. And that will be my grinder username till the end of time. Uh, hello, everybody. How lovely to be here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Chewing the Cud. Nice to have you back. Oh, it's always good to be here, Mike. David Bowie. It is well done, unofficial. It's one of these T-shirts that uh, my mum's got for me online, like a little independent artist. And uh, okay, cool. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, once my mum gets online, that it's like one arm's bigger than the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sort of Ziggy Stardust era where there was all those like proper beautiful outfits. Because mm -hmm. which... because um, gender fluidity is a new thing, apparently. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing, Mike? I'm, I'm good today. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm not really. I'm a bit hungover. Are you? Before a show? It's hard to be hungover after a show. <laughs> Drunk after a show. Um, but today, I have got a story who has been banned from a sporting activity after his bathroom antics, and it's not Oscar Pistorius. And then I will bring you something really scientific and, well, barely scientific in that science that is. How exciting. And uh, yeah, we definitely have some poetry from me, Dom's Top Poetry. Uh, you can see our social media all along the screen now. If you check that out, we are at The Cud TV. And there's names of people who have dropped us a line, go along the bottom of the screen. We go over to Dominic and the Showbiz News. Okay, so do you know in which country Eurovision will be taking place this year? England? Sweden. Oh, Sweden okay. this year. But do you know who will be representing us? ABBA. Sweet. ABBA. <laughs> so Ollie Alexander of Years and Years is uh, who we are going to have representing okay. us. Cool. And uh, yeah, big old Dance music is uh, what, uh, 80s dance music is what is being promised from Ollie. Nice, Alexander. like an 80s banger. So I'm someone who isn't always up to date with the current pop sounds, but but Ollie Alexander, you know, years and years, been uh, the, the It's a Sin cover version was really, really awesome. And there he is. Ollie, yeah, Ollie is a, is a you know, someone who... who I would say, my subjective view, represents us queers pretty well. Mm -hmm. A political person, Ollie, yep. you know, doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't hold back from opinions. And looks magnificent. There we are. Gay gender chicken. fluidity all the way. That's gay chicken. That's not gender fluidity. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where we placed in last year's Eurovision? We didn't win. We didn't win. <laughs> so we lost. We no were where we were. We were second from last last year. Second back from to where last. we should be. Yeah. The yeah. fact we came second the year before that wasn't supposed <laughs> to happen. People were shocked that. Happened. <laughs> well, you and I have talked before about uh, about fast songs versus slow songs, mm -hmm. and I am always in the camp of fast songs and and bangers. So an 1980s style banger. That's what I'm hoping for this yeah. year. It's not going to win, make us win, though, is it? Oh, I think this is reverse psychology. I think I, I, it makes me believe even more. No. Well, this is our year. This is our, Team Ollie. I, I, I think that we'll, you know, it'll be a good... Can we change that picture? It just looks like he's trying to... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's, is it out yet? It's like, is he bottoming for the first time? There we go. Um... <laughs> <laughs> No one's graceful the first time. Um, so I think we'll build our hopes up and we'll just not do very well, as happens every single time. Voice of positivity. We said from Mike Blue. There, we yeah. said internationally acclaimed rec recording group Blue, mm. and we did appallingly. We even sent L M Gilbert Humperdinck one year. Right, on the promise that it's someone's granddad. They'll give us a pity vote and no one voted. It's, yeah. No, no, all change this year, all change. Mm -hmm. we, we're going we're gonna to do super well. Feel it in my bones, okay. definitely. <laughs> I mean, it'll be a good show to watch. I'll enjoy watching it, but no. Moving on. 
So, Queer Eye. Mm -hmm. Do you watch Queer Eye? I have two of them in my head. Glorious! <laughs> well, uh, there are uh, five uh, folks on the Queer Eye show, but one is leaving. One is Ooh. heading off. Bobby Burke is uh, quitting the show. Oh. And uh, what has caused a little bit of hubbub is uh, hubbub. social media. Hubbub, hubbub in hubbub. social media. Of okay. all things, of all places for there to be hubbub. So on Instagram, uh, one of them, which one is it? Tan. Mm -hmm. Tan has unfollowed Bobby. And uh, this loads has been read into this now that it's like, you know, what what's going on behind the scenes and I, I, I kind of think, I remember, I remember we talked about David Bowie before, mm -hmm. you know, proper, proper queer eye stuff from the, from the, the 70s. And then a lot went on that you just, you didn't get all the, all the gossipy stuff back then. And, and, you know, I, I, I think too much is read into whether somebody follows or unfollows someone on social media. I think, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's fair enough, isn't it, that people work together and then, you know, maybe they don't get on. That's all right, isn't it? It's That's okay. all right. That's OK. Fine. That's OK. I wish them both the best in their careers. What do you reckon, Mike? I think the wrong one left. Do you? No. Not a massive Tam France fan. I mean, he does good work and he's done some really good documentaries and stuff. And, and some of the things he's done about, like, growing up gay and Asian. Yeah. Really informative and really powerful stuff. But I just don't find him enjoyable to watch. Mm. Mm. Moving not as, on! Not as controversial as the time I said the wrong um, Phoenix died, but. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So, being the uh, grumpy old person I am, I'm often somebody to like slag off the, the social medias and whatnot. And I, I don't do the TikTok. I don't do, I don't do that. But I do know Dylan Mulvaney. Okay. And Dylan Mulvaney, I, I have thought she's a real. In, in my subjective view, a real, real force for good. I think uh -huh. there's a lot of uh, a lot of joy in Dylan, and a lot of uh, you know honesty, and you know overused word, but bravery. Uh -huh. And uh, the big news with Dylan is that her passport has the letter F on it, that, that really being uh, recognised as her gender in a passport, in a legal document, and uh, and she's she's American as well, isn't she? Yeah, exactly. So that'd be an American passport. That's that's a big step forward for America. I mean, especially considering all of the things that they've not done quite very well recently. Um, and there we go. There's the F. Fantastic. Do you follow the TikToks, Mike? I do. We are on TikTok. No. Yeah. <laughs> Shows how much I know about the show <laughs> on which I'm featuring. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are at the Good TV. Wow. On on TikTok. How lovely. Yeah. And I personally am on TikTok as well. Um, I do like to, I doom scroll on TikTok a lot. I can quite easily go an hour, an hour and a half just going through TikTok. I enjoy it. Well, that's lovely. Take off your judgmental <laughs> head, Berry. Take off the judgmental head. I, I, I think that if one is engaging with anything, be it like a... Uh, 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 a show about um, pottery or baking or, or anything. There's, uh, in my head, there's no sort of hierarchy of uh, of sort of intellectual. Well, it's just, are you engaging with it or not? Are you engaging it? So if you're on TikTok for an hour and a half and you think, yes, that's an hour and a half, well done, that's great. What I dislike mm -hmm. is when people are like, not engaging with it and grumpy and, and like, you know, oh, I've wasted that time. You know, people make choice, they moan about their own choices. Oh, I've, wasted, I've wasted the I evening. don't think anything that I do is a waste of time. Good. I, uh, well, there was that one guy. Um, oh. But yeah, um, it was that, I, I think that when I'm just watching TikTok and I'm just going through, just absorbing the content, that's not wasting time. That's giving my time, my brain time and that's Absolutely. me relaxing. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's a fun yeah. thing to do. I've spoken in the past about how nerdy I am over video games and I don't think that video games are anything other than joyful ways I spend my time. But I'm not someone who like plays video games, oh, I'm doing nothing in my evening, oh, I wish I was doing something. You know, commit to, to something. Then you know, I write poetry, <laughs> I like going out running, I like seeing my friends and I think that 
people often moan about things that that, that they could they could change and social media is control. is one of them and i think that people linking to our previous story about the queer eye thing i think engage yeah. with things joyfully that's all I ask, Mike. That's all I ask of our planet. Engage joyfully. Is that too much to ask? Apparently so. Apparently so, yeah. Fair dues. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for all that, Dominic. It's always good to know that, you know, Eurovision's coming nowhere near. Okay. <laughs> have a... You are welcome. Right, stick around because next we have got Mike with the buzz. Hello, hello. You are watching Chewing the Cud with me, Dominic, and this one over here is Mike. And we are going to go deep into the somewhat poorly lit web as it is Mike with the buzz. How do you feel about fish? Well, I do not eat fish i like do you like them swimming existing about fish? I, I i applaud their being yes why do, do you, you really applaud their being do you I walk do up to the sea well done right. fish. so in my poetry i have an entire poetry show actually one of my ones for younger audiences about just how magnificent fish are swimming around sort of enjoying the Water, yeah, I do like fish actually. Yeah, okay. so yeah, <laughs> good. Tell me something checking. lovely about fish that isn't oh. about eating them. Okay, so this is about a fish called the doomsday fish. Oh, okay. Um, so it's found off the coast of Thailand. Misleading name, is it cute no. and fluffy? Oh, doomsday, doomsday. How fish. big is the doomsday? It's, it's massive. Um, so it's, it's huge. Oh, my um, word, and it's not a happy fish. Um, so yes, it's 11 metres and it came out of the Adnan Sea on um, early this month. Um, now, according to uh, Votlo, when this fish is ar arrives and it is, it's caught, it's a sign of a, of a bad omen. Happy New Year! <laughs> <laughs> the face is bad shit's about to go wow. down when you get the doomsday fish because it's covered in spikes and it's not a very pretty fish. Wow. It's, just, it's somehow hairy. Like a hairy fish. Um, when you're a creative writer and you mm -hmm. send your ideas off, especially the children's shows, which for me often feature magic and monsters, sometimes editors will be like, oh, that's a bit far-fetched. It's like, have you Googled deep sea creatures because if you do there is nothing in the ocean that, that my imagination has even come close to creating i mean the things you know they've got see-through things in the bottom of the oh things. yeah yeah no no, no don't like you know no seeing brains oh no no, no. They, they did a thing where you could they filmed some of these these like prawns and you could see their blood going round mm. and as they were eating and things you could no. Mm. See I actually <laughs> the doomsday fish doesn't look as horrific as I was anticipating. It's when... not a pretty fish. Well <laughs> it speaks very highly of you Mike. <laughs> so it should do I'm bloody gorgeous. Um, but yeah it, it's impending natural disaster because the thought is that when they, they the bottom feeders so they only come to the surface. <laughs> it was, a, it it was a choice of words. Yeah. I made it on purpose. <laughs> right. um, so they only really come up to the surface when, when like waves are getting beat, like tsunamis and stuff. Right. Oh, so it's not just superstition. There is some science behind the, it. They've discovered the science behind okay. it. But it started off as a, a superstition going, this big fish is here. Oh, no. Could just leave it's... the fish in the ocean, couldn't we? We could just like not. Not then, fish them then, in the first place. Then how would we know that doomsday is coming <laughs> if we don't take them out of the water? I think I think in the current political climate, if you just say to yourself, is doomsday coming? Yeah, you're probably correct. Yeah. I, I do sometimes feel like I would be a great peacekeeper because I would just end the war. <laughs> because everyone would just blow each other up. Mm. <laughs> Guess what they just said about you. <laughs> um, moving on. Do you believe in UFOs? I do believe in UFOs very much so. Okay. Not a big believer in UFOs myself, but I do believe there's 
like life outside of the Well, that's system. what I meant by my so, yeah, this is yeah, the yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they've... Yeah. I don't think... Why would they want to come here? It'd be like going to Skegness. <laughs> You'd go there because your parents made you because it was cheap. You know, it's like... Do you want to go and see a world slowly explode itself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, aliens probably, UFOs not so much, okay? Yeah. Unless you're living in Leeds. Ooh, what has happened in Leeds? Um, a lady has photographed what she believes is a UFO following her. Following her Following her, yes. Okay. Um, it also resembles Doctor Who's TARDIS, surprisingly. Mm hmm um, I don't know why I found this this story on the internet. I don't know the algorithm algorithm knows I'm a Whovian. Um but yeah, this is um Katie. Okay. From Leeds. Um she saw she saw it shining above her house in Leeds. Right, so she took a picture of it. Yeah. Um she's it's not a star. She doesn't know what it is. It is what the doomsday fish was predicting. Yes. That is what it is, yeah. <laughs> a UFO that looks like the TARDIS. I think she may have been drunk while watching Doctor Who on Christmas Day and saw it. Wow. But yeah. She doesn't look particularly scared or freaked out in that picture. Well, that, fair analysis, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we don't have a, a picture of it. I've not seen the new Doctor Who. There's, there's, there's the new... Uh, Oh, uh, have, you, have you watched? Yes. Yeah. What's your review? What's your take on loved it all? It. Did you? It's very difficult for me to not love a Doctor Who. Mm. I think I've, lo I've not loved one episode. That's because it had James Corbin in it. Ah. Um, he ruins everything he touches. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's in... But, yeah, the new one, loved it. Who's your favourite Doctor of all time? <sighs> I'd have to say Matt Smith. Ah, a modern choice. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my doctor, so my first doctor was, what's his face? Tom Baker? No, later than that. Sylvester McCoy. Oh, really? With Ace. <laughs> okay, Professor. Uh. Ugh, me. Has Bonnie Langford been back in it? She has, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what's she like? She's good. Is she? Yeah, yeah. She's good, isn't she, she... she was the Sylvester McCoy era, wasn't she? No. Testing you now, aren't no, I? I don't know the answer to this. She, she was pre that. It was Ace that was the Sylvester McCoy. Right, right. Just, oh, she irritated me. Mm. But anyway, and if um, you get irritated by fictional characters on TV, join us at The Good <laughs> TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, have you ever been accused of cheating? Uh, go on. He said, <laughs> not answering no. the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yes. <laughs> um, Integrity is everything, Michael. Yeah. Michael so. James. Uh, Michael James. Going for the yeah. first full name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> doesn't work unless you use that. <laughs> now, this is about a man in China who has had his um, basically his title of chess champion stripped and banned from participating for an entire year after being accused of cheating. The way they found out he was cheating was because he. Accidentally shat himself in a bathtub. He did what in a bathtub? Shat himself in a bath. He was in the bath. Right. And let out a fart that was more than a fart. He had chess pieces up his bottom? No, no poo. It was poo. Um, so he, he pooed in a bathtub, right? And I went, that's unusual. Why has that happened? And it turned out throughout the entire competition, he'd had remote control anal beads in. <laughs> Right. And, and people were communicating to him with the pulses and vibrations so he knew which pieces to move. Oh, my goodness me. My goodness me. So it, it, it had them in for so long and on such like frequency settings and stuff that he basically gave himself a prolapse. Um, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Wow. Yeah. So he did basically, it's, it's not traditional chess, it's Chinese chess. I see. <laughs> Makes a massive difference, Dean. <laughs> pulses would be very easy with a normal chest. Yes, yes, no. Um, but he had a remote control angel he's put in and someone was, was helping him from a distance. That is stranger than fiction, isn't it? That yeah. such things can happen. Choices had been made. Yeah. Yeah, it's 43. Wow. Surely your facial expression would give it away though. Well, it, it dep depends. How immune to anal bead vibration you are, how used to it you are. Exactly. So, wow. you know, if, if he's got to the championship to win, 
It's going to be going on for think a while. I don't a life where one has grown immune to the vibration of anal beads. I don't think that's a life worth living. <laughs> it's not a life I would want, Mike. I don't think it's a life anybody would want. <laughs> Maybe they didn't have it on a high setting. Maybe they had it on the starter setting. Maybe. Just enough to tell them pulses yeah. and vibrations and things. Or may, maybe have the, the whole <laughs> the whole sort of like full force on and it just doesn't flinch anymore. Wow. You know, prolapse in the bathtub, so I mean it's Oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, he's lost in every sense of the word. He's lost yeah. in every single sense. Not even sense like he could world. cheer himself up with the beads as like <laughs> consolation, because presumably they they don't ask for them back, do they? The board of chess cheating uh, you know, they don't, his own. They don't <laughs> loan them out and go, oh, it's time to hand them back in now. Just run them under the sink before... Put, the, uh, put them in the dishwasher. Um, <laughs> the question is, was he... Like, if he used them again, would he just get sad that he got caught? Would it bring back, like, memories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a loser in every sense of the word. How tragic. Yeah, How tragic. tragic. Yeah, but the gallery have said that they're going to start using those um, as a way of communicating <laughs> with us as well. <laughs> <laughs> and from that pulsation, that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Well, I shall never contemplate vibrating anal beads in quite the same way now. So please stick around because coming up we have something far more highbrow. We have some poetry from me in Dom's Top Poetry. Welcome back. And yes, you are watching Chewing the Cut. Now we're going to have something a little different to our game of the week as Dominic is going to read some of his poetry in Dom's Top Poetry. <laughs> So, are you, are you settled and ready to go, Don? Oh, I'm always ready to go with the poetry. I've got another three for us this week. And my first one, we are coming to the end of January, or as some people call it, Veganuary. So I have for us a science poem. I've only got one science poem, and this is it, my science poem. And it goes like this. Protein, 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 protein. Protein. Protein is a biochemical compound whose name Berzelius found. Von Voigt claimed flesh makes flesh. Then Sanger sequenced insulin. Peritz prized haemoglobin and the Swedish were impressed. More studies on its benefits directed mutagenesis as Weissman had foreseen. Now to give these claims such credence does not distract from this grievance. Where do vegans get protein? What exactly do you eat? Can't be healthy. No meat. Such Shakespearean introspection between the facts to delve lament. Be 12 or not be 12? Surely that must be the question. It's simple to eat, sensible. The soya bean lacks cholesterol, is easily fortified and cooked can taste exceptional, tongue tinglingly sensual and yes, it does provide protein as does peanut butter, black beans, flax seeds, pecans, almonds, lentils and cashews. And yet here is my beef. People talk of my belief and people question what I choose when I don't choose for pigs to feel, don't believe their pain is real. That's fact, not myth, not needed. So can we in evolution swap these myths for resolution? See the cruelty superseded. The facts of protein's chemistry are documents through history. They're laid out plain and clear. So I hopefully wait for an honest, heartfelt date when protein's myths will finally disappear. Thank you for listening. 
are you trying to tell me you're a vegan? <laughs> well, in true <laughs> vegan fashion, I don't like to mention it. I don't speak of it very often, you know, keep it to myself, you know. <laughs> well, what's the phrase? How do you know if you're threatened to vegan? They'll tell you, my God, will they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's all true. All, all those things that do provide delicious protein. Absolutely. I have been quite often known to nibble on a handful of nuts. Right, that's our first of three poems. My second one is uh, another one of my older poems, which I've not said for a little bit. So I thought, let's, 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 let's get it out for the show. <laughs> now, it used to be back in the day that people kept their music on iPods. Now, I'm still a person who treasures my iPods, but most people don't. For most people, they're long since forgotten. And that idea forms the centre of this poem called I Will Not Treat a Friend Like an iPod. Because an iPod is a thing that's made to break, to use until it doesn't work anymore and throw it away, knowing money will get a better one, the latest one, ready for temporary adoration. Well, I will not be told that a friend with depression should be thrown away. A happy person is not a better person. You can sing me all your tracks, not just the cheesy pop you think will make me smile. Give me your difficult second album. The one with all the distorted guitar feedback and seven minute jazz piano solos. For what many will dismiss as an obscure clunky B-side can give deeper meaning that lasts and is too precious to delete from any library. An iPod is a thing that's made to break, but Leonard Cohen sang, there is a crack in everything, that's how the light gets in. Well, you're my Leonard Cohen and my Justin Bieber. For we are weird. Kate Bush waking the witch. We are live bootleg Marvin Gaye's final concert 1983. You see, I believe that we can always be chemical brothers, scissor sisters, sister sledge. We are family. I believe we can always be. An iPod is just a thing which is made to break, but all of us are built to sing. Thank you for listening. So lots of musical references there. Are they all on your, your, your playlists? Are they all on my playlist? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. No, no, oh, actually no, Justin Bieber is not. I put okay. that in for, uh, <laughs> for flattery's value in a theatrical setting. That's, that's okay, I was, I was just concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anything, any, I'm one of those people who if you say like, oh, remember this five years ago, I'm like, yeah, five years ago, 1995. Like, it was. any pop culture references from post-99, they, they, they all happened in one year, right? 100%, yeah. yes, because I am still 21. Uh, my final poem is about something that I would absolutely love to do, and it goes like this. I wish I could go back in time and tell 10-year-old me that it is okay to be a big girly boy. And I want to tell him you will find joy in effeminacy and masculinity. Reject the fragility of male identity. You will find as much affinity in the daring drag of David Bowie and the silver lipstick of Tricky, as you currently do admiring the macho muscle of He-Man and all those other boys' toys, which are okay to enjoy, but you have so much more about you than just a plastic action figure or cartoon. One day you will find room to grow and know the fecundity of true gender fluidity. And I know 10-year-old me would say, what do all those long words mean? And I would reply, they mean 
I have seen those playground lads who leave you lonely, feeling strange. But I have also seen the future. It gets better. Things will change. Thanks so much for listening. Cool. So 10 year old you, so that was 1995. <laughs> 1990. I think I can remember my age because the last digit of my age is the same as the last digit of the year. However, that's dependent on me remembering what year we're in. Yeah. And I, I cannot do either. I cannot do either. Yeah. It's quite a popular poetic technique where people uh, uh, write what they would love to say to their younger selves. In fact, if uh, viewers would like to have a go at writing a poem themselves, I really recommend that as a place to start advice if you could send it back through time and guide uh, your junior self on their journey what would you most like to say oh, that's a nice little tip so if someone you know wanted to start writing poetry yeah where where would they they do that i'll do that again because i stopped it I'm asking a boy out for a first date. Um, and so, you know, going back in time is a great way of starting that, that journey. So where would you recommend people start that journey? Is there a place you can go? Or? Hmm. I guess it depends where you live. For me, I moved to Great Manchester, where there is a wealth of events in person that you can go to. And where possible, I think bringing communities together is, is the best way. I grew up really rurally where that wasn't an option. But what we have now, which we did not have when I was younger, is online groups. And there are so many supportive, nurturing groups online for people that want to get into poetry, share creations they've made. Uh, I think that poetry is at its best when it's with other people, not a lonesome process just being on your own. Right? I think to share it with others and to experience the poetry of others is a wonderful thing to do, whether that's online or in person. Great. Thank you very much for that, Dom. Well, stick around, because coming up next, we have me doing that science, that is. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we learn something we didn't need to know. It is Mike in That Science, that is. That Science, that is. How do you feel about lava lamps? I feel magnificently about lava lamps. I think they are beautiful and cut. We're going to make a lava lamp. Well, sort of, because the problem with lava lamps is they, over time, they become cloudy because it's, it's wax that they put in the bottom that's it's coloured and then um, the rest is water and wax will slowly emulsify into water. Okay, So that's why after a while they go a bit cloudy and a bit weird. Now, what we are going to do is a, a lava lamp that requires no electricity is a chemical reaction lava lamp, okay? And it will settle itself back so it will technically last forever. It won't last forever. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do is prepare our vessel. Excellent. So you should, ha you should have a vessel. Right, okay, yeah, I've got some thing. stuff on my table. So yeah. it's the empty one, the vessel. The empty one is your vessel, okay? Oh, this is brilliant. This is what will become your lava lamp. Okay. Okay, now because there's no electric involved, the, the lava lamp will require you to be in a lit room, but it, it will still, that, that will be our body, the lava lamp. Right. First thing we need to do is create the thing that's going to go up and down and go bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Okay. Uh -huh. Now you have been given some food colouring. Yes. Yes. So what I want you to do with your food colouring is squirt it into your vessel. <laughs> and I, I believe you have red. 
I do have one that has red written on it. I am I am a colorblind person, so I wouldn't know it was red if it didn't have red written upon it. Okay. So into the one that's currently empty. Yes, however, you do need to cut the tip off, I've just realized. Oh, okay. Um, so please pause. Oh, ow. shit. <laughs> we ready? Yeah, so you have a tip on that you have to squeeze off. Second. Well, I've, I've currently got camera five on, so I'm just trying to work out which one. Is. is it that one you want? Right, okay. Okay, so I want you to empty your, your gullet into your vessel, but just get it into the bottom. Okay, I'm going to make a mess here, I know it. Right, okay. So the whole thing, yeah? The whole thing into right. the bottom, but try Ooh. not to get it on the sides. Try to not get it on yeah, the sides. Yeah, just want it at the bottom. Beautiful. And it'll that lovely satisfying noise. Satis yeah. What? It's a fluid fart. I, think <laughs> that's I, I got a little bit on the side, is it? That's okay. We, we will be adding water in a moment. Okay. Right, okay. yep. Job right. done. Okay. So pop your lid back on because there'll still be some remnants of colorant in there. Lid on, okay. Lid on. Okay. And now into that, you want to put some a tiny amount of water. I just put the lid on. Oh, no, no, before you put the lid on, sorry. Okay, right, you want yeah. to put some water in there. Right, uh, how much? Okay, so you want it to go, so the metal bit is just above the metal. Just above just the metal. Just above the metal, okay. Okay. And then give that a swirl around. Okay, because okay. you want the, the food coloring to dissolve in the water. Oh, this is really exciting. It's really not. It is, it is. Okay. What were we saying before? It doesn't matter if it's scrolling on TikTok. It don't matter if it's, you know, making a lava lamp. If you're engaged <laughs> with it fully, then it's uh, a beautiful thing. And this is, I'm, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm on board for this. I'm okay. on board. Cool. Now I'm just going to move my water out of the way. Um, and now you also have some oil. Oil? This okay. is vegetable oil. All righty. Okay. And then I want you to, when you, oh, oh, how do you open these things? With difficulty. There's a thing with a thing. Yeah, 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 you just, uh, just can't find it. There it is. All the way round. Right. 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 And now your oil, uh -huh. you, want, you want to kind of dribble it into, because you don't want to mix it up too much to start with. Right. So you're going to dribble your oil into your vessel. And how much? Um, Almost full. Almost full, Christ. Almost full. Yeah. Because oil um, is basically lighter than water, so it floats. Oh, this is science. Okay. And so what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to chemically propel, <laughs> makes it sound much more exciting than it is, um, the fluid at the bottom through the oil, and then it will fall back down again, hopefully. Wow. So. This is about how much oil I use when I'm making myself a curry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you use better quality oil than this stuff, though. Probably not. Oh, but okay. I've done it almost to the top. Is that too much? Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah? That's fine. OK. Um, I'm going to pop my oil away as well. Now, here we have oil on top. Yeah. Colourful liquid on the bottom. OK. We need to excite the, the fluid at the bottom uh -huh. so we we'll get it to rise to the top. Yes. Okay. And then what will happen is when it becomes less excited, it will droop back down again. Right. <laughs> um, story of my life. Yes. So we'll excite it and it'll droop. Okay. Now, to do that, you have an effervescent tablet. Okie dokie. Okay, that some people use when they have a mild hangover. You wouldn't know about such things, would you, Mike? No. Okay. Now, <laughs> what we want to do is you want to pop the the tablet into right. into the oil. So but I'm opening then, this up. Yeah, but we yeah. need to add, put the lid on very quickly. Oh, okay. 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 So you want to pop the tablet in, lid on, pretty much straight away, and make sure it ties on tight. Oh gosh, this is this is where human error can come in. This is where it I can mess everything. So, pill in and tighten it up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Whee! Screw, 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 now, screw. What happens is. I'm going to put mine in, and there'll be a little bit of a delayed reaction because as it goes in, it covers itself in oil. Okay? Yeah. But then as oil floats, it will naturally take itself off. 
Now, if you have a look, you've started to, you've started to do. Oh, look. my word, yeah. The bubbles are rising. And I've started to rise as well. So all these little colourful blobs of water are rising to the surface. And then what will happen is you'll start to see them fall down as well. Yeah! Right, and they start off quite small. And then they get bigger as you go along. Oh, Mike, this is lovely. And the thing is, after it's all reacted and the, the tablet is finished, yeah, it will then it'll, it'll continue to fall and it'll re-separate out because oil and water don't mix. Um, and then you can just pop another tablet in. Okay. If you wanted to speed up the reaction, yeah. Okay. You take the lid off. Ooh. Okay. Because what happens is this is causing pressure in the in the vessel. Okay, because it's producing carbon dioxide. So that's producing pressure and reactions are slower under pressure. That is beautiful. That is so good. I'm just going to flip them in a little bit. There you go. And it speeds it up. Oh, man, man. All right, all right. Let's, uh... Here we go. It's opening up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Way! Super nice. There you go. And that's it, just, it'll keep doing that for a little while and then it'll, it'll just all fall down again. That's, that's absolutely how to make a lava lamp without electricity. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful, Mike. You, you undersold this. This is really pretty. What a lovely thing, what a lovely thing. And not only is it lovely, it's that science that is. That science that is, well. My life. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Upstaging you. Go on. That science, that is. So we'll just talk about this. So, yeah, so you're impressed with that, are you? This is really beautiful. It's the kind of thing I can imagine if you did have like, you know, niece or nephew or whatever, like to entertain them with something uh, other than scrolling through TikTok, which is worthy and is lovely yeah. and is great. But anyone could do that, you know, like not everyone has the skill, uh, the knowledge, the prerequisite knowledge. But five, once you've five learned... Minute, five minute crafts. Yeah. If you, if you take the lid off a little bit, it'll fly. Oh, hello. But a little. <laughs> Rock and roll! Oh no. We've oh no, no disaster! <laughs> oh man! Yeah, maybe don't do this with nephews and nieces. It looks like a... Oh no, I'm Lady Macbeth! I was going somewhere else with that, but it also involved a lady, but that's almost <laughs> the end of the show. <laughs> um, remember to join us on our social media. We are at The Could TV. Hey, all right. Well, thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Take care and bye. 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 <laughs> nice. That is art, that proper. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice I think we need to watch that off quite quickly because it's fine <laughs> and it will stay. <laughs> I'm an artist. It's fine. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah. Right. Oh, Ooh, right, you. I'll go yeah. to the bathroom. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs>